Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about hypothesis testing and specifically uh, the type of hypothesis testing we'll be using throughout this course which is called null hypothesis significance testing. Um, there are other types of statistical hypothesis testing uh, strategies and techniques however null hypothesis significance testing is is still the most dominant and the most widely used and the one you're most likely to encounter in a basic statistics class so we'll uh, rely heavily on that so basically with null hypothesis significance testing there's this thing called the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis is basically like a straw man that's set up uh, usually the researcher wants to reject it, right? So the null hypothesis, uh, for most purposes in this course, will state either that there's not a difference between the population means or that there is no relationship between the variables that we, we might be assessing a relationship between. So basically the null hypothesis is saying that there's no effect, there's no relationship, or there's no difference between the means in the population. Uh, so uh, we could symbolize that by if there were two populations, population one and population two, if there is, if they essentially have the same mean and the null hypothesis is true, we could put mu subscript one equals mu subscript two. So that would be the null hypothesis. Now usually a researcher would want to reject the null hypothesis if they're attempting to uh, find something. So uh, usually a researcher wants to provide some evidence against the null hypothesis. Not always, but, but usually. Uh, usually the researcher has an alternative hypothesis in, in, in mind. And the alternative hypothesis would state that there is a, either an effect or a difference between the means or a relationship between variables. Um, and that alternative hypothesis uh, can be non-directional, meaning it would just say something like, there is a difference, but or there is expected to be a difference, or there will be a difference uh, but it won't state the direction of the difference, or it could be directional, uh, where the direction of the difference would be stated, such as population 1 is expected to be greater than population 2, or population 1 is expected to be less than population 2. Uh, usually a researcher will have an idea that's, that is likely a directional uh, research hypothesis, but they might resort to using a non-directional statistical test to um, give themselves the opportunity of being wrong in the completely opposite direction. And we'll get to that in a moment. So in a directional hypothesis test, the ability to reject the null hypothesis when you reject the null hypothesis, you're basically saying that there is an effect or there is a difference between the means. In a directional test, the ability is in one direction. So here we see a right-tailed uh, directional or one-tailed test would, would state basically that let's say population one is expected to be great, the mean for population one let's assume we're comparing means, the, the mean for population 1 is expected to be greater than the mean for population 2. Whereas a left-tailed uh, test would say that the mean for population 1 was expected to be less than the mean for population 2. Now researchers, as I said, usually have a direction in mind. They have a way that they expect their results to turn out. Now data don't always uh, you know, do what we want them to do, but a researcher will usually have a, a, uh, a hypothesis, a prediction regarding how they expect the results to turn out. Uh, so if they do a one-tailed test, it gives them what's called uh, st more statistical power or the ability to detect an effect in the direction that it is predicted. Uh, so a, a one-tailed test gives you a little bit more power in the direction that you predict but it gives you no power or no ability to detect an effect in the direction that counters what you predict. So many researchers resort to two-tailed tests. Now two-tailed tests kind of split the rejection region, the area where you would be able to reject the null. They split it in half and put half on the right and half on the left, and it gives you the ability 
to detect results that counter your prediction. So let's say you think population one is going to be greater than population two, but you want to leave open the possibility of detecting that population one is in fact less than population two in terms of the population means. In that case, you would likely do a two-tailed test. A two-tailed test is going to give you a little less statistical power in the direction that you've predicted, but it will give you some power in the direction that counters your prediction. So some situations may call for this. In, in situations where only one direction of the results is of interest and the, the countering direction is of no interest, then a one-tail test would be uh, preferable. All right, so in all of the inferential tests that we'll cover in this course, it's basically the null hypothesis that is being tested. So we could call it null hypothesis significance testing. And what we're going to ask repeatedly is, what's the probability of the findings in the data, um, or the difference or the relationship in the data from our sample, if there really isn't one? So you have to think that's something that a lot of students have to think about it a little bit is, is, is what are we actually doing with null hypothesis significance testing? We're asking what's the probability of what we found if in the population the null hypothesis is true? Uh, another way to put this is what's the probability of the sample difference or sample relationship if we're looking at relationships or more extreme if there really is no difference or no relationship in the population. So when this probability, which is often called a p-value, when it is very low, let's say uh, less than 0 0.05 or less than 0 0.01, it depends on the situation and what the cutoff might be. But when it is very low, we're going to reject the null. So rejecting the null actually means that you found something, that you, that you have evidence to suggest that there is a difference or relationship in the population. So rejecting the null means detecting something. Alternatively, if the probability is too high, the probability of your results, given that the null hypothesis is true, is too high, we can say that we fail to reject the null. And in that case, we kind of just say we don't have enough evidence to say that there's a difference or an effect or a relationship. Now, the cutoff that a researcher would use is often symbolized by alpha, and it can be called a significance criterion. So researchers will often use a cutoff to determine how low the p-value must be in order to reject a null. So if the p-value is below alpha, the cutoff, the significance criterion, then the researcher will declare what sometimes is called statistical significance and basically say that there's evidence in the data for a difference or a relationship. If the p-value is greater than alpha, our significance criterion, then the researcher will say that there is not a statistically significant difference or there is not a statistically significant relationship between the variables. Uh, so this is basically a dichotomous decision rule. It, it, it kind of forces the researcher to say, based on our results, we think there is a difference, or based on our results, we cannot say if there is a difference. And uh, Alternative ways to deal with p-values are to think of p-values more as a continuous thing, as which they are, they're, they're probabilities, and the lower the p-value, the more strength of the evidence against the null hypothesis, and the higher the p-value, the less strength of the evidence against the null hypothesis. And just as a reminder, the p-value is basically, uh, you can think of it in a number of ways. Um, but I think it's probably easiest to think of it as the probability of the results if the null is true. Uh, it's okay to think of it as the probability that your results are due to chance. So remember, we're, we're, we're talking about results in a sample. And what's the probability of finding those results if the null is true in the population? So we'd want that p-value to be lower to be able to reject the null hypothesis.